So I, I'm always a big believer that you have to bet on the American economy that's going to help the, the people that have invested in real estate or invested in America. They're going to continue to, to do well. It's the short term pieces that I have a problem with. Welcome back to the real grind, ladies and gentlemen. We're here getting amazing guest speakers to talk about real estate while we sip with this nice gourmet cup of coffee. And it's been interesting, Italo, how we see some people that love coffee, some people that don't know anything about coffee, and it's just getting the experience. So we definitely gonna have to have a follow-up on our guests and be like, hey, what is your experiences after? It's like drinking that wine, right? Absolutely. Sometimes we drink that wine, and then we're getting get better wines, better wines, and then as you, you know, you just become fancy. You do. You become sophisticated. <laughs> sophisticated. You know what? But what I, you got to know there today? What kind of coffee? Neander, yeah, uh, I'm, I'm, I have a coffee problem now, man. What's, what's the issue, man? Look at this. Every time I go out now, I buy coffee after coffee after coffee. I'm running out of space. I'm buying all this coffee, like things and i'm running out of money man like my savings uh, my savings were like those you know the, the little pigs the money was coming out of it and now my pig is so skinny because no, i'm on. buying it, so much stuff and i'm running out of cash hang man. tight dante uh, uh hang dante just call uh, you dante. is that because is that because i said is, I, did, is because, I was gonna shave no, <laughs> i didn't even get you're losing shaving. hair you're losing hair so i call you that but look i i know a solution for you i know a guy <laughs> that can definitely get you some money dude this like, guy knows. He's the we we know him as the Godfather. Like, so he's is, the is guest he the one that's that gonna in. make me an offer I wouldn't be able to refuse. I don't know. Like the We're 1970s have to talk guy. To him, but this guy knows how to get money. He really? knows how to get money. And with that, let's get the show started. The real grind. Waking up to success. Hey. Now we're getting it started. Hey. This is the real grind. Everything you've been wanting. Building an empire. No question. Talking about real estate. Investing. Making the millions. No stopping. While we sip on. Go and make coffee. Hey. The real grind. Uh, this is the real grind. Let's go. All right. In today's guest, he is... Uh, in the real estate financial industry since 1987, has closed over $5 billion in real estate transactions. He's a deal maker, a.k.a. the godfather, originally from Western Springs, Illinois, a husband and a father. His name is Paul People. Welcome to the stage. What's up, Mr. Godfather? Well, hello, Deanna. Thanks uh, for having me on. Boy, what a place this is. You know, we do a little bit of a podcast ourselves. A little bit of a podcast? Just a little bit. You guys rock, man. But uh, what an environment that you've created. I love your studio audience here. Man, they are, uh, they are great. Hello to everybody in the back there. <laughs> so it's wonderful. But uh, yeah, our, our podcast, the Old Capital Podcast, is downloaded about... 60,000 times a month. But, Can you uh, imagine that, dude? Yeah, we're, we're probably, uh, I don't know how if we're any good or any bad, but we've been doing it for a long period of time. So my co-host, Michael Becker, and I, uh, Michael's an operator. I'm, I'm the money guy. And we kind of have a, just kind of a chit-chat about what's going on right now within the industry itself. And so, uh, but it's nothing like this. We do it over Zoom. We used to do it in-house like this, but this is unbelievable. So but congratulations. Do you know, but do you know what? Proven's all the time. My content is king, man. So definitely, like, you don't need a big production. You just got to have content. And you guys have amazing content. Like, I heard multiple people. I watch multiple episodes myself, and it's just amazing content, man. So, Well, thanks, uh, Neander. We appreciate that. And again, uh, we are where the rubber meets the road type of stuff. And so we're... People want to find out more information about what's going on in investing in, a, in apartments. We don't uh, put a slant on it. We just kind of tell you really about what's going on. And so uh, tune into the Old Capital Podcast. Let's go. So we're going to put a link down below so you guys can definitely check him out. Because, you know, here we talk stories and empowerment and people, how they got started, how they are today. But if you end up get into the bones, into the meat, this is the right podcast for you. Thank you, Deanna. Absolutely. So, Paul, man, uh, again, thank you so much for being here, for taking sure. our invitation. And I, I hope you like coffee as much as we do. Well, it, I, I'm a coffee drinker, but I also like tea, So, but I am ambidextrous. I can go both ways. Let me just put it this way. The way you drink coffee here is like tea. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. It is. It is. 
Good. It is. So, Paul, share with us a little bit about your beginnings, where you're from. and So, originally from uh, the suburbs of Chicago, like you mentioned, Western Springs, which is in the western suburbs. I went to the University of Iowa for undergraduate, uh, went to the University of Illinois for graduate, went out to California. This was back in the 80s. I uh, worked for some big banks out of California. In 92, I was brought to Texas uh, with one of our large banks, and I've been in Texas ever since. So I've been in banking and commercial real estate for probably about 38, 39 years. And so I've been, even though I look fairly young, thank you. Thank yes, you. yes. <laughs> uh, there you go. I, I, I'm old. And so, but old in my sense just means a lot of uh, stripes on my sleeve that I've seen a lot of different things. So I was part of the, the beginning of the savings and loan problems back in mm. the United States, back in the uh, mid 80s, the, up, up until like 91 here. Uh, I was here with the dot-com burst with the uh, the Great Recession uh, in, in 2008 to 2011 with the subprime business. I was here uh, you know, during the period of time, which I think is, is pretty much right now that we're seeing a little bit of a pullback. And so I've seen a lot of different, different stories, different scenarios, different ways that people have structured deals that have been successful and different ways of people that have not been successful by the way they've structured transactions. Absolutely. And I'm sure that we call you Godfather for a reason. Because I remember like going to a bus tour with you, seeing a property. Like, oh, this one was this transaction. This one was that transaction. That one is so and so owns it, man. You know everything in town. So, I mean, we're, we're blessed because, because that uh, we've been in this market for a long period of time and the market being really North Texas. Yep. So Dallas, Fort Worth, Austin, and San Antonio. We have probably either done the transaction one time or we've done it five times. And when we say that we know where all the bodies are buried, yep. <laughs> we certainly do know where the bodies and the chalk marks uh, are, are buried. The coordinates of, of things, right? We just know the back, kind of the back story. Sure, absolutely. So back into when you uh, went to college and stuff, why did you get into finances and the banking? Was that something you always wanted to do? So, yeah, so that's a great question. Uh, I've been in banking for a long period of time, but prior to that, I always thought I was a banker because, you know, this was the period of time, if you can remember, uh, Alex P. Keaton, and that was a, a show called Family Ties, and he was kind of, he was raised by a bunch of liberal people, and then he was the most conservative guy that would w walk around with a, a briefcase, and he would talk Reagan economics at the time, and they would put it, that, well, that was me. So I was the Alex B. Keaton back in the early 80s, and so I always had a, a slant to get into banking, something, uh, managing money or things like that. So that's that was my original idea of what I wanted to do. That's the original idea you wanted to do, man. And uh, what was the the real estate part of it that came about, like you know, to multifamily and stuff? Because you're doing lending for it's also lending for for that kind of purposes on the banking. Or? Yeah. So so I started off with just lending. So I worked for a large corporation, a bank out of New York that had operations in California. Mm -hmm. And so we were just a lender of money. So we were a big lender and we would do office and retail and multifamily and some of the other different food types okay. that yes. are in there. And so I was an analyst. That's how you kind of, you, you, you go, you become an analyst and then you become a manager. And then I, and I did all kinds of stuff. So I really liked the lending of money because it, it's like a, a, a puzzle. It's like a, a box of kids pieces that we shake that box up in the morning. We throw it on the table and we kind of have an idea what it's going to look like. Yep. And we whether this piece goes here and this piece goes here. I like putting the pieces together every day. And that's kind of what real estate lending, real estate, commercial real estate banking is all about. So then I went to another bank that had a depository side that took in money for deposits. And then I lent the money out. So I've been around bringing in deposits and lending the money out for a long period of time. And what was the point of time that, you know, you were working for a bank that you decided to, the old capital came about? So old capital has been around since probably about 1998 or so. So a long period of time. And so what was the name old capital? I went to the University of Iowa and the University of Iowa is, is famous for the Hawkeyes, Big Ten school, but in the center of the school in the, the quad, as they would call it, was the old capital, which was the first and original uh, uh, capital for the state of Iowa. Okay. And so then they built buildings around it. And I was like the name old capital, like old capital, old money. I'll use that. Right. Yes. Yeah. So the, I, I, I should have called it Leander, but. 
capital, but they, they uh, didn't. Neander, Neanderthal, Neanderthal capital. capital. Neander, Neanderthal capital. <laughs> that could be old too, man. You yeah, know what I mean? Neanderthal, Neanderthal capital. But I should, should have thought about uh, that, but, you know, it, it's it's worked pretty well. No, but I, I actually, when I thought about the old capital, I thought about that is interesting story, but I thought it was like old money and, you know, especially, you know, Texas, I didn't know much about your beginnings to us start seeing your bio and it's from Illinois and all the old capital, old money, people that invest and conservative and stuff like that. It's yeah. Yeah. So I, you know, as I say, I moved in 92 from the West coast, uh, was living on the beach. And then I got a call from my bank, uh, Lieutenant that I was a, I was just a little infantry person that I was moving to the middle of Texas. And I was like, you know, where, where the hell am I going? And they said, Dallas. And he goes, I, I've never been to Dallas. And this was back where I used to manage from Los Angeles County up to Monterey. And I was in the middle of, uh, of now, I, now I'm living in the middle of Texas. And so I've been here for 30 years. It has absolutely been a, a huge blessing to see the economy jump up in Texas. Uh, and uh, looking at all the people that, were, was, that thought I was crazy about moving to Texas. Now we've seen you know population of California uh, jump out of California. They haven't all come to Texas, but a lot of people have come to Texas. And uh, for instead of going west, now it's go east, young man, to find your opportunities. And and being central part of the United States has been great. Absolutely, and uh, you know the 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 role that you guys play on the landing side, man, as a mentors is absolutely incredible, right? For the people that are here, and especially on you know you help as a bunch and you know, a lot of the clients because you guys being around and seeing it all, and that's I think what it plays a very important part to. So yeah, I, I definitely agree that we're kind of like the quarterback in the transaction, and so uh, nothing happens really in the transaction until the lender, the bank comes through to do the deal to bring the money. So we'll bring, you know, if you're you're if you're the buyer, you'll put in 20% or so or 25% and then we'll bring in 75 or 80% of the money. And then we just have to make sure that we close the transaction on time so you can take over your your dream to make not only your investors happy but also the limited uh, the the tenants in the property much more happy because you're going to try to improve their life. So we really see us as the kind of the quarterback of the deal, bring the money to the table, close on time, and make sure everything works. Right. That's awesome, dude. So right a little bit before we get to it, because I want to give you your perspectives and the audience to be what is going on on the landing side this year, because everybody's hearing so many different stories and stuff. And you guys, you, you have seen a bunch of different scenarios. So we'll love to hear that. But do you know, guess what time it is, Paul? I'm thinking it's coffee time. It is coffee time. Let's go. This is unbelievable. All right. So I guess this is the godfather. This is the godfather. All right. Very nice meeting you. Thanks. I'm not going to put my financial problems in your, <laughs> on your shoulders. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to make your piggy bank a lot bigger. That's what I do. That's what I do. I'll trade that for good coffee. <laughs> okay. Good trade, I guess. <laughs> but um, yeah, so today, today I have something that I think I'm putting myself in a very tough situation right now because I know he's as blunt as it comes. He's gonna shoot me straight, right? He's gonna tell me what it is as is. Please do, man. This has been boring. You know, we only got good feedback. So I know. Coffee things. I know. You gotta be one to be like somebody spits out and drinks like. <laughs> I, I just want to make sure if they just spit out, the just couch, this yeah. way, this way, <laughs> right here. <laughs> but this coffee, it, it, it's something that is like, I saw it online because I do the subscription because I can get different coffees from different locations sure. and all this stuff. And this one has Neander's state name on it. So I was like, this will be cool for the show. And we're as real as it gets. We, I got here and I was super excited to show it to Neander. Guess what he told me? This smelled like rat. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> smells like rat. I was like, how is that possible? I was like, I didn't rip fart in that right now. Like there's nothing here that you're making like smell like rat, but I don't know. I like the coffee. I made espresso out of it. So I made a latte with it. I liked it. Wow. But I shouldn't have told him about the rat now because he's probably thinking <laughs> yeah, about it. Oh. But I like the coffee. I'll give you that feedback. I like the coffee. He hasn't had it yet, but this is going to be the chance for the three of us to try it out. I did it using as a uh, using an AeroPress. You know what that is? I don't. It's actually a little tube that has two parts of it. You put the 
coffee ground inside of it, you put hot water and you make the coffee, you brew the coffee with pressure. So it's pretty neat. And I think I'm gonna be able to extract some good flavor from this coffee, hopefully, but there's only way to find out, right? Let's get it. All right, so Paul, this is your coffee right here. If you take a look at, at the top right there, you can see a little bit of the oils in the coffee, so mm, we can- It's actually, this, this smells good, Dante. Oh, oh, now it smell like what, a teddy bear? This is the second <laughs> time I've been calling you Dante. Did you know? <laughs> so it's it's okay, Leander. It's okay. All right. Yeah. Or Leander. Leander, Leander. Leander. Yeah, Paul called me Leander today, so okay. we even. We Sorry about so that. let's give it a good smell. And. Mm, it does taste a little bit like rat. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Is that the tail I, I let taste? Me, let me see where he's. He was roasted at <laughs> Disneyland, so it's I guess it, it is Mickey Mouse, right? It, no, it's good. I, I <laughs> it's listen. actually very good. It's very it different good. body tone to it, you know, right. but it's it's different. So I don't know if y'all remember him telling me that I ju I judged the book Damn by it, its I cover. Wish that was bad, so I could say it was. So bad. no, this, this is good. Is, yeah. So it, it says that it's supposed to taste like toffee and marzipan. Can you educate us in here, foreigners, what a marzipan is? A marzipan is like a like an almond. Paste. Uh, Did sugar. you know that? It's, it's very good. You put it in, uh, in so like uh, different things you would get at the bakery, and then you can have mazapan in uh, different things you would have around uh, Christmas time, and so they make them into ornaments. Oh. So it's it's very good. That uh, coffee is very good. I, I'd like to have another one. If you you, would you really? Yeah, yeah. I'll definitely I mean, bring you some more. Yeah. yeah, that's good. I mean, it's one of those things that's funny because if you somebody- You skeptical. When did you arrive here at the show? Do you like coffee? Oh, not that much, man. And I'll be blunt. And that's why he said yeah. to me. He was like, okay. I'll take, I'll take another little And it's, it is kind of like tea, right? Because you drink tea. It is. I, I drink tea yeah. three that's times a day. Really? So that's good, yeah. Why, why the tea over coffee? Because I grew up in a family of tea drinkers. I did, you know, they also drank some coffee, but they were more tea drinkers than the, you know, being an Irish Catholic guy myself. Yeah. Uh, out of Chicago, uh, tea was the big thing with a little cream, a little. Is it kind of like the, the people from England do, like tea time type of deal? Very much so. And that's how I grew up. And that's why I continue to, to honor my, my parents' tradition of uh, having tea in the mornings oh, and I tea know. in the afternoons. and. And yeah, probably a spot at night too. That's cool, man. And yeah. I, we all say this: the coffee and tea, the hot beverages bring people together. You know, having a time to go have it, it's just absolutely amazing. Absolutely. You get into the Starbucks business and make be a competitor to them. Boy, that's a big business. We're gonna do the real grind office right next to the Starbucks. Right. <laughs> a business centric area that you can bring ideas to fund these multifamily properties. Hey. Would you find as a landing? I'll, let me see what I can do. <laughs> <laughs> He's always right next door. Oh, right. man. But yeah, so this coffee, again, if you guys want to check out coffees like this, uh, check out the trade, the website. We're not sponsored by them by any ways. It's just a place that I've been finding some good coffee, interest, interesting coffee. And this one, Neander has to redeem himself now in front of yeah, me, in front actually, of the gas, which is amazing. Good. Good. I love it's it. Good. And uh, I'll definitely get you some more coffee, but I'll let you all keep going because I want to hear more about it. Maybe I can get my piggy bank a little fatter, man. I need, to get, I need to buy more coffee stuff. There you go. All right. Paul, well, it was a pleasure. I enjoyed it. And uh, y'all have fun. Let's okay. go. All right. Thanks. See ya. Thank all you. Right. Hey, guys, real quick before we continue. So if you want to learn a little bit more how to get it started on investing in real estate today, please go to their website, multifamilyempire.com. And if you also want to learn how to do the best cup of coffee in your own home, we're going to teach you a lot of tips and tricks. Go to multifamilyempire.com slash forward the Rio grind. Let's get back to that interview. Paul, what is your, uh, I know into flying fighter jets. What is the involvement of yours? The, the, the jets and the... So not much but fighting or flying fighter jets, but I'm a big supporter of the military. Yeah. And so... Uh, Did you have a picture on a fighting jet? Or, yeah, or was, so... That's so the military cannot be political. And one of the things that they learned a long time ago is that if you bring a lot of people from the area mm -hmm. that, uh, that want to have, uh, in this case, we were kind of trying to support the Fort Worth Joint Reserve Base, and they fly F-16s on the reservists, so the Air mm. Force Reserve. And so what they wanted to do is make, they wanted to say goodbye to these old F-16 fighter jets yeah. and replace them with brand new F-35s. And so... I had a chance uh, to go out and fly with the Air Force on a number of different missions. That is Going amazing. all over from San Diego, North Island, to Florida, into all these different places and being a part. Then on the, on the behalf of them, I was 
I was supposed to be a good sponsor and try to tell people that this is the reason why we need to have the F-35 in Fort Worth. They say goodbye to the F-16s, get the F-35s in. So they, uh, it was a, a good trade-off. So I did a lot of fun things for the Air Force where the Air Force was going to get the F-35s over. Did you serve? I did not serve. I did not serve, and I thoroughly respect the, the people that did did serve, and then we, we tried to support them by hiring uh, Air Force and, and Navy and, and Army and all the, all the services. Thank Absolutely. you very much. That's great. I did serve right there. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> Thanks I did, for the uh, service, uh, by the way. A hundred percent. I was uh, frustrated. I, my dad served in Brazil, and I wanted to serve here. Uh, you could, did you have a chance, and you grew up, and now I'm too old to serve. But like, I love it. Love it. Everything about it. Man. But I, do fly air, I do fly airplanes, though. I just oh, don't, do? I don't fly jets. It's awesome, man. And yeah. I, 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 I was going to serve, and I respect a lot for, for the military stuff. It's really yeah. cool. It's a very expensive hobby. Yep. <laughs> I bet it is. So, Paul, uh, talk to us a little bit. What you for the time of this recording? You know, everybody's it's it's a lot of shatter out there. A lot of things going on, and what's going to happen? We actually going to have a, a a little bit of uh, this week at a live event here in the office about you know sharing from a little lead uh, from the industries like yourself and about what's going on this year, man. There's a lot of so I, I would love to hear your perspective since you got such experience on that industry. You've seen it all. What is your yeah, expectations so again, for 2023 yeah my again going back to my experience level is that i think that bio was a little bit odd today that i probably provided to you we did we did about a billion and a half dollars just last year wow. so we do billions of dollars in in apartment lending uh so i have a little bit of a perspective on the real estate lending side and so if you go back you know 30 years ago uh the structure of these transactions were completely different they, they did not have fractured ownership or, as we call them, syndication models like they are right now. What it was, it would be three, three guys or two guys and one gal or three gals and one guy, whatever the heck it was. It was <laughs> three, three, three people. And it was an operator. And let's say I was the operator. It was my rich friend. That would be you, Deander, and it would be your brother-in-law. And then you would be kind of the, the person that would operate the property and they would put the money into the deal. Mm -hmm. So that's how Fannie Mae liked the deal because we had three people that eyeballed the property. They lived in the area and they wanted to see, you know, stabilize rents and then you would do right for the property. And so that model was that way up until probably about, about 12 years ago. And that model kind of changed from having three guys to having 50 15. guys, 50 <laughs> to 100 guys in these fractured ownership interest uh, syndications. And so uh, we had to get back about 10 years ago, we had to get Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac comfortable with it. So we worked with a lot of uh, groups that were educators and mentors, uh, and they presented to us the ability that they wanted to get some of these people to buy apartment buildings. But you know, back then, 10 years ago, apartment building wasn't $30 million, but it was maybe $5 million or less. And it was easy for three people, but then we started to get people to come into the syndication model. And Fannie Mae was like, whoa, I don't think we like this. And then all of a sudden we said, hey, listen, instead of having you know, two or three rich guys, we can have like 15 or 30 rich guys in the case there's ever a problem that they can stick money into the deal. And they thought about it for a little bit and they said, yeah, we'll, we'll do something like that. And so the syndication model kind of exploded because before it was 90% three rich guys or, or gals and 10% syndication, and then it became a flip-flop, and it became 90% syndication model and 10% rich guys. These, these properties have gone up in value so much that the only way to buy these deals is in a, a, a syndication model right. almost. And so that's how it's been. And so we've seen a lot of people that have gotten into this business in the last, say, four or five years that probably should never have gotten into the business. They were IT professionals or they were doing something else, but they were, weren't real estate people. And so they got into it because they were told that you could make good money on, on, in on these transactions, which was true. I mean, these, these things started to go up uh, rapidly. So valuations went up. And now uh, I think that we kind of plateaued. I think we're, we're kind of like right here. Now, I'm a big believer in commercial real estate that if you hold it for a long period of time, I think you're gonna be fine. 
but if you're only holding it for a short period of time, there's always issues with uh, with maturities coming, yeah. interest rates going up or going down, uh, rent uh, occupancy going up or down, or like we were talking about, uh, the cost to rent on a monthly basis of, of that actually going up or going down. And so over a period of time, I know that if you have a historical view, if you go back like we were doing back 30 years ago or 20 years ago, if you kept... If you own this property for a long period of time, you would be fine. And I'll give you an example, what I, what I think, is that you have to really bet on the American economy. You know, think of, think of October of 1929, think of December 7th or December of 1941, think of uh, things that happened all the way to October of 1987, things that would happen in even September of the 11th and what's happening right now is that we've had these little bumps, huge bumps, for people emotionally in, in the wars and in things that were, were created during that period of time. But it's, it's, it's gone up. The economy, U.S. economy has still gone up even when we've, we've seen pullbacks. So I, I'm always a big believer that you have to bet on the American economy that's going to help the, the, our, the, the people that have invested in real estate or invested in America, they're going to continue to, to do well. It's the short-term pieces that I have a problem with. The other piece that I, that I like to, to bring up and, and say is I did a loan on a property back about three years ago for a borrower that bought a property over in Fort Worth, a nice property, but when it was built in 1938, it was a class A building in 1938. Big, tall trees, brick, brick, just absolutely gorgeous property. And so he bought the property, I walked the property with him and there were shadow boxes on the walls from 1937 that showed what the uh, uh, architectural plans were of this property. So they had held this for 80 years or wow. so, 80, 80 some years. And they showed it for somebody walking in and, the, and the, the office was just gorgeous. But you could see what the vision was for the architect. Well, one of the things that they showed in 1938 when this property became available to lease out was the rent roll. Any idea what rents were in 1938? Oh my God, for like, man. Again, this is a class A building in 1938. Two bedrooms at the time, only one bath. Two bedrooms, one bath. What do you think in 1938 that property was worth? Or the unit was uh, least listed uh, for rent for? A hundred bucks? $27. Jesus Christ. So over a period of time, what is, what is rents today? On that same that same, property. same property, it is a beautiful property. It's been maintained, and over a period of time, rents were uh, eighteen seventy five. So from twenty seven dollars to one thousand eight hundred and seventy five dollars in rent. So you've got to bet on the long term history of commercial real estate on apartments to be specific, and that rents will continue to rise, values will continue to rise, but for the short term pieces that we don't have any control over that we're, we're going to see some reflections of, of problems. And, and I think we're going through that uh, some reflections of problems in terms of interest rates being one of those things is that when I first got into commercial real estate in banking is that we had interest rates go up in one day, 5%. One day, one day Paul 5%. Volcker, who was the, the chairman of the Fed at that period of time, he turned on the heat and made interest rates go up by 5%. So we're lucky then that today with Powell, Chairman Powell, we've seen 5% over a period of say 12 or 13 months. So we've been able to kind of plan that out a little bit. But even if interest rates have gone up right now, is that there's some impact of what we can expect. One is the cost of the transaction has gone up significantly. Uh, cost of the transaction would be the actual interest rate itself is that a lot of these loans that were done with adjustable rates on the bridge loan to acquire the property, because if we had done, a, say, a Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac loan back, say, a year ago, two years ago, we probably would have gotten only 55 or 60 percent max. Yeah. A lot yeah. of the bridge lenders were doing up to, say, 80 percent. And so. But with the hope to, to you know, tr to hope to rehab the property, yeah. reset the loan, the uh, the rents to make them even higher. Right. And one of the things that you had to do is you had to dip buy an interest rate cap, which is kind of insurance. Yeah, insurance. We're on making sure that if the interest rates do rise, that you have an insurance policy in place to pre prevent that straight up uh, payment rising. Yeah. 
Which it's, is kind of, in a way, you probably buy in, into a, a kind of tick bomb, right? Because you have those, uh, if interest rates doesn't go down or anything on the value, so express your cap. Can you rebuy your cap after two years? You or? can buy it, yeah. You you could have bought it. But then you didn't underwrite that in. That could be like a big, well, that, here, big deal. Here's, here's what the problem is. It happened is if you bought this interest rate cap and you actually bought an interest rate cap, some of the lenders did not have that ability. They just said, hey, interest rates are not going up. Don't buy an interest rate cap. Well, a lot of the lenders said, buy the interest rate cap because we're going to make that a requirement. So if, you, if, if it was a requirement, you usually wanted you to buy a three-year interest rate cap, typically. And then what they did is that after the third, and then these loans were not for, for 10 years or 30 years. These were loans for three years, interest only, and then they adjusted, began years four and five to one-year extensions. But you really were supposed to do everything the first three years to rehab the property, push rents up higher, and then be able to sell it or refinance it into something else. But if you didn't buy the three-year interest rate cap, you only bought, say, one year or two years mm -hmm. with the belief that you'd buy it another year of the third-year interest rate cap, then you, uh, you may have bought it at, you know, for a $25 million uh, loan amount, you may have bought it for maybe $100,000 or so. Today, that's in, because interest rates have risen, that same interest rate cap is, is over a million dollars. Wow. So it's gone up 45 times. And so a lot of, a lot of uh, partnership groups are like, well, I don't have a million dollars. Yeah, lovely. <laughs> yeah. So that's where, where, that's where I think some of the opportunity for the people coming in now are to kind of take over these deals possibly and, and find out what they can do for the next jump off to buy properties. But, you know, we think right now is that we've hit kind of a plateau and we think in the future we're going to start to see interest rates come down and we're going to start to see occupancy stay the same or even go up and, and values come back up a little bit more. Mm -hmm. How do you recommend for uh, somebody that already have secured, you know, lower interest rates a couple of years ago or you say, you know, that would have be a refinance kind of option if, or, if or were, just a loan assumption? Yeah, if you had owned a property or bought a property and you did a Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac 10-year fixed rate and it was at 35 or 4%, you're holding on to that deal like a life preserver because that's a that was a great loan. It's going to be maybe interest only for another year or two yeah. or it, and it's going to be fixed. It's the ones that I'm concerned with are the ones that are on adjustable rates that – that, that interest rate cap has come and due, the, the bank is requiring you to buy another interest rate cap, that's the concern. And so, uh, you know, and then we're having other, th other issues come up in the market. You know, again, we live in Texas, so property taxes are always being inflated by the uh, appraisal, appraisal board. And then the, the, probably the next thing besides interest rates going up is uh, insurance. Insurance right now, we used to underwrite these deals at $350, $400 a door. Now they're up to $1,000 to $1,500 a door in insurance on these properties. So we have a, some headwinds, but in the big picture, uh, I think we're going to be fine. One of the things I suggest to a lot of people is that if you cannot, if, if you need to raise money for a capital call, raise it now. <laughs> Because if there's more there's people, there's some going on, and then before they all wiped out, yeah, before they're wiped out, but raise raise the capital if you're a general partner right now, and if if you can't do it, possibly think about selling the asset, uh, or two, uh, think about doing like maybe an FHA loan, which will give you out to a 35 year amortization, mm -hmm. fixed rate term rates right now at the end of March is probably around about five five and a half percent, loans assumable. And so I would just say, instead of trying to do these small, you know, turn these deals around in a short period of time, go back to what it was, say, 25 or 30 years Longer ago, holds. 10 years ago, change the narrative uh, to the investor, is go out as far as you can on the, the fixed rate and on the, onto the amortization so you can qualify. So we're like, we're doing a transaction right now where somebody was in an adjustable rate on a bridge loan, and we try to do it with Fannie and Freddie to refinance them out. They actually had to to bring seven and a half million dollars to close the loan. Seven and a half million dollars is, is a capital call to come in from their partners. Instead of doing Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, we did FHA. Uh, we were able to give them full proceeds plus some, some cash out to, to refinance, to pay for the fees to do it. So they just had to change the narrative to their investors that they, they realized is that, you know, 
survive until 25. And that's yeah. our, our big phrase right now is that some of these loans, we want to make sure we're able to, to, to get through this 23, Forget 24. Forget cash flows. Let's get paid later. That's right. Kick the can down the road. Get into a, get into a loan that's going to keep you up and safe. Yeah. And that's what we think maybe an FHA execution is a way of getting it done. Wow. Man, what a... A lot of stuff to unpack here. No, but, I, dude, I'm great. I'm on the edge of my seat. Like, it's a lot of information, and that's very valuable. Thank you for sharing, man. And, like, what would you have to say for people that are actually looking for deals now? Is that what's the option out there? Like, what you... Because uh, you just mentioned about this FHA. Uh, yeah, I mean, bridge loans are still good. I don't have yeah. a problem with bridge loans. Just know that you have to have some protection within those bridge loans mm -hmm. themselves by by buying an interest rate cap for, say, three, three years. I think... What we're going to see, and again, I'm no expert. I've just been doing this for a long period of time. I think we're going to start to see interest rates pull back towards next year, not not in 2023, 2024. We're going to start to see that. But the volume business of uh, transactions right now is down huge. It's down about 85 or 90 percent. Mm -hmm. So people that were doing a lot of transactions, the realtors, the the uh, listing brokers, I think. Uh, Greg Willett had, had said... They're going to take a vacation. Well, they've taken a vacation. <laughs> they've been, been skiing with Dante, I've, I've heard. <laughs> and so, but, but what they're, they're doing right now is that, that Greg Willett said there's, there was only six transactions closed in Dallas in January. Mm -hmm. Six apartment transactions. Wow. And Dallas is, is the king of Texas, so to speak. Houston a little of bit. Deals. But, but we do a tremendous amount of volume here. So if you only see six deals, that means the rest of the country is, is having problems too. Yeah, absolutely. So this is a good time, I think, to educate yourself, get together with a, a, a group of, of like-minded individuals that, to talk about what's going on and start to assemble cash. Start to assemble money that when you see the opportunity, when the market is kind of capitulated, which probably won't happen towards for a little bit here, but then you're ready to go. So I but think that's probably the biggest You said thing. something interesting. I want to talk about that for a little bit. Like, you know, the woods in the street right now is like, hey, there's going to be a lot of buying opportunities. What was those opportunities for you in your view? So the reason why there's going to be a lot of buying opportunities is because a lot of these people that took out bridge loans or have a maturity coming right now is that uh, I think they're going to lose, they may lose their properties. Some of them will. And the reason why they're going to lose their properties is that they bought on a declining cap cap rate. So they bought it uh, not at six or five. They bought it at three or three and a half or three and three quarters. And now interest rates have gone up and the market has kind of changed. Now we're going up to five, five and a quarter, maybe five and a half. So just mathematically, if you bought a property for $25 million, it may be only worth $20 million or $21 million today, but you have a loan of maybe $20 million. So you may be upside down on your loan that your loan may be higher than what the value is of the property. Now that may change for a while. It, you know, may, it may change here in the next year or two, but in the meantime, you have that, that short maturity that's coming. And if the, if the partnership is looking to put that million dollars sure. to buy that interest rate cap and they're like, we don't have it, let's sell. That's what I, th I think we're- That's the opportunity. We're seeing a lot of people that have to sell into the market itself. And I think that's the opportunity where you can get with guys like, like Neander and his group to kind of understand what's going on and, 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 and make the path correct of where you guys are going to place the capital in this next, next cycle, in this next go around. Interesting, man. Whew. A lot of stuff, huh? A lot of great stuff. Yeah, but you know, just take that long-term perspective when it comes to commercial real estate. I think a lot, of, a lot of folks had gotten into it and, and were trading apartment buildings, like stocks, that they only went up. You know, they went up so much every year, and we don't think interest rates are going to, you know, fall. We think that they're going to be stay the same, but now they actually went up, and so now a lot of them are looking for for solutions, and so uh, I think. You know, being part of a group that can buy these properties, I think that's the way to do it. Absolutely. And it is great to hear this, this your your perspective of it because, you know, a lot of people that we talk to, they always, you know, hey, this is going to be great. It's okay. Let's, you know, and hearing that perspective from you that it's just, hey, conscious, this was going on. It's what happened. It's great. It's very eye-opening and very uh, informative. And thank you for sharing the knowledge, man. Yeah, no, no problem. I mean, again, what I do is a little bit different is that, you know, not only do we uh, try to help you source the debt 
because we we're you know we have the money, but we also are advisors of what you should do and what you shouldn't do. And so just you know rely upon our experience because we just don't want like we said we do know where all the bodies are buried. And some of those are really the tenants that have, have had some problems, but a lot of landlords have had some problems too. So we would say, be very careful. Like Michael Becker's rule number one, you know, some of those things don't buy in the hood. Paul Peebles' rule number one, protect your limited partners. And so we want you to be around uh, in the future by protecting your limited partners as much as you can. So again, we're not, we're not just uh, you know, debt guys, but you gotta look at us. This is where I, I sleep in this, every night. This is, this is where I sleep in every night. This is he. He came to the show and bought his blanket. I brought my blankie with me. So this is my blankie. If you want us to get some more of these, you can come sleep with me. Or I, <laughs> <laughs> don't, but don't oh forget. Oh my goodness, love it. Don't forget to see the Godfather when it comes to uh, getting your money. Yeah, absolutely, man. And, and Paul, how can people, how do the listeners can get in contact with you guys? So again, it, it's just Paul Peebles. Look, look us up. Uh, Old Capital Lending or the Old Capital Podcast. Uh, listen to us. We come out with a, a new show. Uh, not as elaborate as this. This is unbelievable. You've, you guys have done a great job of, with your stage and, and your commitment to doing it right. Me, not so much. So uh, go <laughs> no, to those you know, What it makes is the guys like you to come in, man. Yeah, that's great. So we appreciate spending some time with you. Again, uh, you know, I think uh, you guys are doing it right. So we appreciate having the opportunity to, to kind of share the story. But this part of the show, man, is the part that we, we're going to spew some. They, they want to know a little bit about that blanket, man. So that's the <laughs> spilling the beans with Paul people. Hello there. Hello. <laughs> How are what you? about that blanket? <laughs> All right. Chicago deep dish pizza or New York style? Chicago, of course. Check. Yep. Okay. 1986 Top Gun or 2022 Maverick? Uh, 86. Uh, and that is where I was in banking already, and I was thinking to myself after seeing that movie, should I join the Navy I know, and do that? I know. And uh, I was just, uh, I actually applied uh, for the for the Navy, and you'll like this one. I took my tests, and they they took me down. Uh, they flew me to where I had to go, and then they they sent me back after I said no, I can't do that. After reading through the seven year contract, I said I can't do that. So they sent me back home in a very expensive Greyhound bus. <laughs> <laughs> That's quality. Oh my goodness, man. That's funny. Hawaii or Colorado? Uh, both. Got to pick one. Uh, you know, I love Hawaii. So we bring, if you do $100 million in business with us, we'll bring you over to Hawaii. Ooh. We just came back with a group of, uh, of clients that were just uh, having a great time in Hawaii with us last week. That's awesome, man. White Sox or Cubs? Uh, actually, the Texas Rangers. Texas Ooh. Rangers. So now I'm down in Texas. I have to be with for the you Texas gotta Rangers. You got to be there, man. Right on. All right. Piano bar or country club? Piano bar. I'd love to see you guys play at the piano bar. You and, and Dante would be fantastic at the piano bar. Imagine that. I just that. don't want to go the same hairstylist that you guys go to. <laughs> hey, man. You, you might be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> Cadillac or Lexus? Uh, Lexus, Lexus oh, for me because right. I I have a Lexus and my daughter has a Lexus and so it's good. Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac? Uh, well, I like Fannie Mae candies out of Chicago, so you don't you've never heard of that, but uh, you know both are our great agencies uh, that we do a ton of business with, and you know you talk with your your loan professional that's going to tell you what direction either one or the other should go to. Absolutely, cash flowing deals or total returns. Uh, I'm old school cash flowing. These properties have got to show that they make money either right now or soon to be in the future making money. All right. Reunion Tower or Chicago Bean? Chicago Bean. <laughs> All right. Last question. What would you rather be on an A checklist or getting arrested? <laughs> <laughs> so. So if you if you are a bad actor, a bad player in the multifamily business, in that you 
uh, have not maintained your properties, you go on to the A check with Fannie Mae, which is like being on the bench. You can no longer do more business with Fannie Mae. Now, that's something that you are guilty until they can prove that you're innocent. I'd rather get arrested and go to jail because <laughs> I would be out of jail a lot sooner than me trying to get off of a check. And that was great, man. And that complete the spinning the, the beans we Paul. He had to explain the whole thing. To <laughs> I love it. I love it. Paul, thank you so much for being here, man. It's no such problem. an honor for us, man. We're humble to have you here and like sharing your knowledge and stuff. And I <clears throat> I hope that we can make this. Uh, we got to call him by letter, uh, Ito, in a few months to say, hey, what about the coffee, man? Hey, I, I'm curious to see if he's going to add a little coffee time throughout the day because now he only does tea. Yeah. So maybe the coffee will sneak in there little by little, you know? All right. <laughs> Good stuff. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching the show. I appreciate you always. Go ahead and hit the thumbs like and share with your friends. And this is The Real Grind, baby. Let's go. And as always, thank you for watching The Real Grind podcast or listening to it if you listen on your favorite podcast platform. Also, I want to give it a huge shout out for all the military veterans out there. Thank you for your service. We truly appreciate you. And if you're just like me, don't really know what to do with your money, if you're buying too much coffee stuff already, if you need a little help, don't forget to give the old capital guys, you know, give them a little call, give them a little follow. You're gonna learn so much from them as well. Go support them on their podcast. They're amazing. And as always, thank you so much. This is The Real Grind. Waking up to success. Now we're getting it started. This is The Real Grind. Everything you've been wanting, building an empire, no question. Talking about real estate, investing, making the millions, no stopping. While we sip on, go and make coffee. The real grind, uh, this is the real grind. Let's go.